AMAC is a proud corporate partner of Texas Tech Athletics. With an exclusive inside look into the world of Texas Tech sports, this is KMAX Red Raider Nation. Sponsored by Spirit Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Welcome into your Red Raider Nation. I'm Tori Larned. The Texas Tech football team hitting the turf this morning for their fourth spring practice under new leadership, of course. But head coach Matt Wells quickly setting an example for his team about what he's going to tolerate, benching four players from practice indefinitely. Those players running back DeLeon Ward, cornerback Demarcus Fields, defensive tackle Joe Wallace, and wide receiver Corey Fulcher. Coach Wells says the reasons why they're benched aren't related, but says there's one thing that stands out for him with all of them. We're not going to lower standard. There's a way to do things around here, and it's an honor. It's a privilege to work and to play and to coach at Texas Tech. It's not Nobody's entitled, and I'm not inferring that those guys are. I'm just saying that we're going to do things the right way around here. They could be back soon. They could be back in a while or could never be back. We'll see. And meanwhile, men's basketball using this week to learn the ins and outs of their first matchup in the NCAA tournament against 14th seed Northern Kentucky. The Red Raiders already familiar with seven of those teams in the tournament, beating six of them, but not Duke, of course, in the regular season, but also finding their only four losses to some of these teams, Baylor, Kansas State, Iowa State, and of course, West Virginia being the most recent. None of those potential rematches coming anytime soon in the tournament for the Red Raiders, but a good indication of the high caliber teams they'll be facing. You know, I can say this, we've been through about everything you can go through. We've played against different defenses, different styles, different kinds of players. So not a lot of inventing things this week in practice. We just remind the guys, hey, remember when we played Duke? Remember when we played Abilene Christian? Remember that game against Incarnate Word? That's always the objective in a non-conference schedule and a conference schedule is to get you prepared for the postseason. I think we've done that this year. David Collier and Ryan Hyatt now take a deeper look at what the Raid, Red Raiders need to avoid if they want to make a deep tournament run. Here's this week's last call. This is Red Raider Nation's Last Call. Welcome back to the March Madness edition of Last Call. And we're talking Texas Tech in the NCAA tournament. There are things you have to do and there are things you have to avoid. And there are some pitfalls that have bugged this team this year when they've had rough outings. There have been some common themes. So for you, the first thing Tech has to not do if they want to stay in the tournament. Well, I think second chance points. I go back to the West Virginia game. They just gave them so many offensive rebounds, so many opportunities. And against a team like Northern Kentucky, you certainly don't want to give them another shot to shoot a three-pointer. No, I think right. that's, that's critical. Your turnovers, you can live with your normal yeah. average. You don't have to go super low, but just don't get caught in a frenzied pace, mm -hmm. whether it's Northern Kentucky or whoever you end up playing maybe in that second round. Just play your game, play at a normal pace. And I think, you know, after that, one of the things you've got to avoid for this team this year is foul trouble mm -hmm. early on in the post play. Yeah. I will not be surprised if teams try to really attack Owens, try to, you know, lure him into blocking shots that maybe he shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And if that happens, Texas Tech will be skating shorthanded, and that's going to be hard to do. Lady Raiders head coach Marlene Stallings just one of many in the crowd at the NGAC double tournament Monday night. Stallings taking a look at South Georgia Tech's Rika Jackson, who's a future Lady Raider. Jackson over there with the three. She'll score eight for the night. Their road coming to an end, though, losing to Trinity Valley 73-48. to Now Sarah Shamatsi, another future Red Raider. She's going to be playing with South Plains College tomorrow at noon. They'll face Seward County. So a lot going on, a lot of mm -hmm. terms to look forward to. Hopefully Lubbock will bring in a lot of, a lot of good remarks. We'll yeah, yeah, hopefully be so. It'll be, It'll be fun. Watch all these kids do well. Mm -hmm. We'll be back.